Oh, hey guys, how we doing? Great. Oh, you look lovely. Now, I, uh, I am from New Zealand, we'll talk about that, but first, I, uh, I need to ask you, am I the only person who is glad that birds don't nest the same way Russian dolls do? <laughs> like, just a bird within a bird within a bird within... I mean, it's basically a living turducken. And just wriggles around. I think this is the logical conclusion for the human centipede movies. As we work out and then come back in. I'm not happy about it, but that is what's going to happen. Um, I am from New Zealand. Uh, by round of applause, how many of you know where that is? <laughs> Terrific. Uh, well done. It's, uh, I'm not, I, I wouldn't be offended if you didn't. It's a tiny country. All right? I don't have an ego at stake. I'm not there. I left. Um, I've lived in America for three years now, and I absolutely love it here. I love this country. And one thing that I love about America is the bald eagle. <laughs> My god, that bird? Are you familiar with this bird? <laughs> oh, this has got these big wings, it's got this chest, it's got that beak, it's all like, just every time it's like, yes, the horizon. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just oh, what a bird! <laughs> That's, and that's your national bird. That's your biz. That's the whole thing. Does anyone know what New Zealand's national bird is? Kiwi. The kiwi <laughs> bird. Not the kiwi fruit. That would be very awkward. Although delicious. Uh, no, the kiwi bird, which uh, for those of you not familiar with this incredibly famous bird, it's, uh, it's a very small bird. Great for national bird status. Uh, it is nocturnal, terrific for national reputation. Um, it's of course, it's a furry bird as opposed to feathered, as birds should be. <laughs> and it eats grubs that it finds under trees at night, as all birds. It's basically, it's just rummaging around in tree garbage is what it's doing. <laughs> to me, the bald eagle is basically Superman. All right? The kiwi is a homeless man. <laughs> like the bald eagle is, what's that? I've got it. Don't worry. <laughs> yes, save. Whereas the kiwi's like, I don't know. It's in here somewhere. I mean, I, I must have. It's... But we, we didn't have a lot of choice because New Zealand, uh, in terms of birds, uh, a long time ago when we broke away from Australia and drifted off into our own little bit of the ocean. I know, New Zealand and Australia, two separate countries, very scary, uh, but true. Uh, what happened was that, that we didn't take any predators with us. We were like, no predators, leave them there. All birds. New Zealand, all birds. Um, and what happened was the birds just got real lazy as they're like, no predators, why am I keeping my stuff in a tree? Put it on the ground. It's all here. Look at that idiot flying up like a fool. Uh, and so what happened was over over millions of years, or one day if you're religious, uh, their their wings just go little tiny and just tiny wings just start smaller and smaller until they're just these little nubbins. Like if you if you shave if you if you had a tiny hairless kiwi, it's just got these little. <laughs> it's so it's the only equivalent I can think of to it is that if you were to go on you 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 bring a guy home, you're a lady, you love this guy, you're like it's time for us to take it to the next step. You take his pants down, and there is the tiniest penis ever created. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of, just this tiny little, and you're like, oh bless. There is nothing you can do about that. And there's nothing, these poor Kiwis, they're, uh, they're stuck there. Um, I want to do a couple of, a couple of uh, impressions for you. This is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, if he was a DJ. <laughs> Get down. <laughs> Um, this is uh, Patrick Stewart as Jean-Luc Picard taking his mother, his grandmother's singer machine in to get fixed. Make it so! <laughs> so, okay. 
Um, and uh, this, is, this is Bill Cosby if he was a motivational speaker. Don't sweater the small stuff. You got to be putting yourself first. That one probably should have gone in the middle there. Realizing now, then lead with stuff. Every crowd's different, folks. That one kills in New Zealand. We just got the Cosby Show. Um, I uh, I found out the other day that uh, giving someone shit is so incredibly different to giving someone poop. It does not matter how you wrap it up. It's still a crap gift. Uh, I have to say, I think that if you, if you don't have air freshener in your bathroom, you are the worst person on the planet. You are just the worst. Because I think, you like, do you know how many times you take a poop before you realize it stinks? It's one time, it's just once. None of us reach 45 and go, the kids are out in the back garden, we're sneaking away to take a dump playing Candy Crush, and we're like, oh no. Oh, what is that? No, we know it stinks, all right? We can all agree. And then, like, I'm at my friend's house. No one wants to poop at their friend's house. Can we all just agree on that? All right, but sometimes push comes to shove and you need to find a room and push, all right? But then you come out and your friend's like, oh, Steven, oh, no. Oh, what were you doing in there? What do you think I was doing in there? I was gone for more than 45 seconds. You think I was in there rubbing coconut oil on my nuts? No! I was taking a poopy. And it stinks. And then he's rubbing my face in it. It's his choice. You know, we have, because it's not the Middle Ages, folks, we have the technology. It costs $1.99 from Target and sounds like this. It's so easy. I mean, just go and buy some air freshener, then we move on to world peace. I mean, it's, that's all. I want to ask you guys, uh, are there any fans of hugging in the audience? By applause. <laughs> Not that many over here. What's going on? I, I want to tell you, I love hugging. I love hugging so much. I would be hugging every single one of you right now, except I'm doing this. And that would get real awkward real fast. But I want you to know, folks, we live in a golden age of hugging. There are more hugs available to you today than ever in the history of mankind. Statistically speaking, if you don't like hugging, you just have not found the right hug for you. Now, guys, I know hugging can be a little bit scary, so I wanna help you out with a couple of, uh, couple of guy hugs that'll keep you safe. Here's the bro grab. This'll keep you safe. You go handshake, bring it up with a twist. All right, we're all safe here. Arm comes around, pat on the back. You see this arm? Nipples never touch. <laughs> You're safe, guys. Another good safety hug for guys is the straight man pat. That's where you come in. Pat. Not gay. <laughs> now, ladies, I haven't forgotten about you. All right? It's very important you have your safety hugs as well. This one you may be familiar with if you went to a Catholic school. This is the A-frame. Foot and a half at least. Just bend over, just the shoulders touching. Just little pats, little pats. <laughs> That's all you need. Um, now my personal favorite hug, I would be doing myself a disservice if I didn't tell you about it. It's what I call the speaker blow, but I'm pretty sure most of you will know it as the squeeze and release. That's where you come in, you hug, you hug, you hug, you hug, you hug, oh! Gotta stop hugging. <laughs> someone will get hurt. <laughs> Sometimes a hug can get too intense. Um, now, and everyone is hugging. That's the thing is, we all love it. We're all doing, uh, how many of you are familiar with the handshake? Yeah. This little one, yeah. Yeah? yeah? No one here has ever been to a business meeting. <laughs> no, I don't know. What does it mean? People just come at me. I don't know. I don't know, get that away. No, you jam your hand in, you match it here. That's what businessmen do. They're just like, little squeeze. It's a tiny hug. It's a little tiny <laughs> hug like that. All they're doing is thinking, imagine if this was our whole body. <laughs> Here's my card. 
<laughs> you know, and even even the manly men, the bros, the the sports dudes, they worked out a way around it. They were like, you know what? That's not enough for us. We need more. And then they're like, okay, I'll see you later. Handshake, eyes lock. Well, it can't end here. So they bring it up. They got half a bro grab happening, and they're like, you know what? I love you, man. So they bring the arm around, and they're like, look, we can't leave it like this, but everyone's starting to look at us. So they bring it down. Things get intense, folks. They're pulling. They're pulling at each other's hands, and then pop! All of a sudden, it's just two bros standing alone on the street outside a sports bar at 3 a.m. But it's not over, folks, because they bring it in with the pound. Boom! Which says, I will always be there for you. And then they're out. So I want you to remember, the next time you see some bros doing that little digit do si do all right? They're not being fools. They just don't want to let go. <laughs> I've been Stephen Lyons. Have a great night.